Hello and welcome to this quick presentation of the new features of FastSuite 2023.2. My name is Israel Montoya and I'm part of the product support team here at Zenit. And I'll be presenting you today the very exciting new things that we have, including our automatic toolpad optimization for robotics, the support for laser sensors for our welding and tracking and seam finding, the introduction of our new arc welding cockpit and a couple of other new features. This is going to be hopefully really quick, but we will have all the information more in depth prepared for you very soon as well. If you have worked with FastSuite Edition 2 during the last half a year, you're probably aware of our feature of automatic toolpad optimization. This was available for laser cutting and is one of the biggest breakthroughs that we have for how much time you can save by automatically solving all collisions and unreachabilities in your toolpath just with a simple click. We are now extending this functionality to the kinematics of six axis robotics and specifically we are targeting it to our welding technology. The idea is essentially the same that with one click, you can automatically correct all collisions and unreachabilities, but now with your robot using arc welding. Let me first quickly introduce you to our scenario. We have in this case, an arc welding robot with a two axis positioner and a workpiece that is mounted with a couple of clamps. Here we have four different operations and all of them have some problems. Starting by the easiest one, we have a collision with the torch. This is relatively easy to solve. It only requires a little bit of a tilt of the torch. The second one is a bit more tricky because we have a collision, but it's not the beginning or at the end. It's partially in the middle in between both of these protrusions that are coming out of the workpiece. The third one becomes a little bit more complicated because we have a collision at the beginning with the side plate and also along the way with clamp. And the last one is with the motion of the external axis. It is a complicated path that requires multiple modifications to be solved. Now, the absolute beauty of this automatic toolpad optimization is we can simply right click in the operation and we can get a solution that is collision free and is 100% reachable. And this solution is the optimal for this specific toolpad. So that means even if you're trying to do this by hand, you're probably not gonna get the optimal solution in the level of we're getting here with this automatic toolpad optimization. As you can see, this was really quick, but I'm gonna go move on to the second one. When we have an interference in the middle of the path, we actually make a couple of iterations until we find a solution that it not only adapts the targets at the beginning and at the end, but it makes an analysis of the fuel simulation and we can make sure the modifications we're doing are not only set for the targets that are existing already, but for the entire toolpad and every single section that we have in between. You also get a little progress bar that is telling you what iteration you're doing, how long is it taking, and when it finishes, we can see as well a little bit of a small report telling us how many seconds it's taken to solve the toolpath and what kind of deviation we had and how many collisions have it solved from the entire program. As you can imagine, the last two toolpaths are absolutely no problem for our automatic toolpath optimization. You can see here easily it clears both the side plates, the clamp, and consider these last two toolpaths the modifications that you have to do, they're not so easy. They require multiple targets, they require changing deviations, and they require modifications in different sections with different settings. Inside of these new features, there are many options that you can take advantage of. For example, creating extra points for localized modifications and problematic sections. You can establish some parameters to decide how much are you willing to modify your toolpath or what are the limits of your process. You can lock one of the axes for processes like tandem welding or some thick welding. You can also, of course, delete all the modifications that have been created automatically. And you can, of course, run an entire program instead of operation by operation. This is actually the way we expect you to use it, to simply come with your workpiece, program all at the same time, then run your repo, let it go for maybe a couple of minutes, and then come back to a program that is fully optimized. The value of this new feature is really, really incredible. The easiest one to see is that you're gonna reduce your programming times, your optimization times, about 90%. But also very important, you're gonna be sure that the result that you're getting from your optimization is the optimal. So overall, the quality of your process is also gonna improve because you're gonna be sure you're deviating the least possible from the ideal toolpath. Also very important, you don't longer need to be an expert in robotics or in optimization or in path planning in order to get the best quality of the toolpath. And even for the easy ones, it's gonna save you a lot of effort because you don't have to go there in each one of them and modify them manually. It's all gonna be automatic. I must also say all these improvements also apply for our laser cutting technology. So the intermediate point checking, the creation of extra points, and also the change of configurations also apply for our existing Apple technology for laser cutting. And this is one step more towards full autonomous programming where you can simply let the software do the entire work for you.
Several features have been enhanced with the touch by point indication, like the possibility to modify any of the angles or positions of your touch sensing search, or to simply add points before or after or intermediate of any on the sequence of the touch sensing. But apart from the touch sensing, we have two new methodologies. The first one is searching and finding the seam using a line laser. So instead of touching each one of the plates with the touch sensing, you go and measure with the laser the three dimensions at the same time. Now, programming this feature in the new version of FastWit Edition 2 is very simple. You simply have to select the option of seam finding by light laser and then program your process geometry as you would usually do. FastWit Edition 2 would automatically create the points where you have to create the searches at the beginning and at the end of the seam. It will set parameters to offset the TCP to the distance where the camera laser can be measured and it will automatically create all the sequence and the signals necessary to send to the controller in order to activate the camera and get a searching result. The second type of calibration is the seam tracking by line laser. Simply go to your recipes and then select the seam tracking, then program your toolpath and you would also automatically will get the necessary points, sequence and signals that are necessary to turn on your camera at the right moment to start the tracking and signal to the controller then you want to start tracking your weld seam. FastWit E2 can be a huge help for this type of applications because before you even build your station, you can make sure that the kind of camera that you want to use fits for your workpiece, you have enough place to have it, is compatible with your torch, and is able to do the process that you want to make. Also, for all of these big systems where tracking cameras are usually used, you can take full advantage of many other advanced features of FastWit E2, like the automatic down hand for the positioner, our automatic toolpad optimization, and the interpolation of the external axis for the gantry or for the positioner as well. The next big advancement that we have, we call it the arc welding cockpit. Basically what we're trying to do here is to transfer the knowledge of how a process should be executed from the entire pipeline, going from the planning of the seams all the way to the offline programming and ultimately to the programs that have to be put into the robots. So this is how it works. We begin just creating a toolpad like we will normally do with our swipe function, but now we see that we can add other extra attributes. Here we can establish how big is our weld, what type of wear we're doing, if it's gonna have some push or pull, what is gonna be the material or in case the identification that we need, and what is also going to be the weld position for this. Instead of making the weld, I'm gonna go for a moment to the controller builder, and then we're gonna see the database that we can create in there. And this table contains many things, starting by the ID material, size of the weld, and the position and type, but also containing like the speed, the size of the wire, the voltage, the current, and how much gas, and all the settings that we need for our process of arc welding. Now, you can fill it here manually, but the best way, or what we're expecting, is that you have a table, and you can import this as a CBS form, and you will have an entire table full with all of the welds that you're gonna be using for your process. Now, the nice thing happens when you now program the process geometry that we created before. When you go to the active program, you now see in the section of the welding motion, then you will have the speed that you have written within your controller table and also the welding program that you have for the size of the weld that you establish. So the software automatically looks for, so what are the settings that I need for speed and welding program depending on the size of the weld and the position that I'm having for this particular weld? And they fill them automatically here. First, you might thought, okay, this seems to be a little bit of a too much work for you know, just getting these values automatically. But the way we're actually intending you to do thing is as follows. I'm gonna change the, the workpiece in here for one that I have created using uh, what we call our open XML form. And this is a way of importing workpieces that you can use, you're probably familiar with it. It's just a text description format of where are the workpieces, what is the CAD data. We can import this workpiece, delete the other one, and you will see here you have all the process geometries already pre-set up. So that means you can keep continuity of the data. So whoever is designing this part, it will not only give you the cat, but it will also give you a description of where are the welds and what type of weld is expected for that part to keep the design. Now, given that knowledge and given the database of welds, you can actually go and program them all at the same time and the software automatically will take the right fit for the values that are required for the type of weld that you're trying to do. So this is not only a huge save of time, but most importantly, it allows you to have data continuity. So it allows you to be 100% sure that whatever the designer intended for a specific weld is kept all the way until the point that you're putting it in the program directly to the robot.
So this means you can have a better planning of your project. You can already know how long this is gonna take even way before your cell has been built. You need less training for the people and how to manage and handle data because all of this is done automatically. You have less risk that something will go wrong. Someone will enter the wrong program the wrong schedule or the wrong speed, and then you will have defects in your part. And you can be confident that whatever was the design intent is gonna be preserved all the way until your final program. Before we finish, there is two features that I would like to talk about real quick. One is the support that we have now for dynamic limits. This is because several robot manufacturers create robots that do not have fixed limits. They actually follow some specific complex function. And now we can program this with a Python script. And you can see here the behavior difference in between the robot in the back that has dynamic limits. Compare this with the simple limit robot that is on the front. And you can clearly see why this is very valuable and why you should have also a software that supports this dynamic limits functionality. So you can have a simulation as real as possible. The second one is a new type of calibration that we call multi-point calibration. This is used when you don't have a fixture or you don't have any corners or any like specific fixed points of measurement for a workpiece. And this is especially very useful when you have parts for laser cutting where you do not have a fixture. So what you do is you just take a bunch of measurements on the surface of the part and these measurements are then mapped to the surface of your CAD data and you do not need to bring any fixture, any CAD of the fixture. The points are automatically mapped and you get a best fit for all the points that you will measure and you can get a result that is really close to the original position of the part. If you would like to know more about any of these features, keep an eye open for the webinars that we have for the new functionalities of our software and the best practices, or simply give us a call and we can always analyze your, your case and we can see how fast it can help you with your process and everything that you do.